In this video, we'll be learning how to solve multi-step dimensional analysis problems. Problem number one. We're going to change 13.6 centimeters cubed into kilograms per meter cubed. We're going to have to change the top part of the fraction from grams to kilograms and the bottom part of the fraction from centimeters cubed to meters cubed. Some equalities that are going to help us make these conversions is we'll have a thousand grams is the equivalent of one kilogram. And to be able to change centimeters cubed into meters cubed, I'm going to need a volume equality. In order to obtain a volume equality, I'm going to use the length equality that a hundred centimeters is equal to one meter. And I'm going to take this length equality and I'm going to cube both sides. To create a volume equality, you need to take a length equality and cube both sides of that equality, both the unit and the number. So if I take 100 centimeters and I cube it, 100 cubed is a million. Written in scientific notation, that is 1 times 10 to the 6. Notice I have also cubed the unit of a centimeter and that has become centimeters cubed. On the other side of the equality, if we cubed one meter, the numerical part one cubed stays one, and the unit of a meter cubed becomes a meter cubed. So the volume equality that we're going to be using is highlighted in yellow that there are one million, one times ten to the six, centimeters cubed in a meter cubed. So using these equalities, we should be able to solve this problem. In step one, we're going to take care of the top part of the fraction. We're going to be changing grams to kilograms. So let's multiply through by the first equality if there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. Notice that I place the thousand grams on bottom part of the equality because I want the grams to cancel. If I was to stop right now and get a numerical answer to this problem, unit wise my answer would be in kilograms per centimeter cubed. But notice not only do we need kilograms on top as we have now, we also need meters cubed on bottom. So now if I use the volume equality, the 1 million centimeters cubed and 1 meter cubed, we'll be able to make the last conversion to get our final answer. So if we multiply now by a second equality, notice now I'm putting the 1 million centimeters cubed on the top part of the next equality because I'm wanting the initial centimeters cubed to cancel and you need one unit on the top and one unit on the bottom for this to take place. So now if you notice everything highlighted in yellow is going to cancel, the grams cancel and the centimeters cubed cancel. In dimensional analysis if you want a unit to cancel you need one unit on the top part of a fraction and one unit on the bottom. Notice what we're left with here is the kilogram per meter cubed, the final units that are desired. And if we now do the math, if we take the 13.6 and multiply it by one, and then divide by a thousand, and then, and then multiply by a million, the one times ten to the six, and divide by one. The final answer that we'll get rounded to three significant figures because 13.6, our initial value had three significant figures, is the 1.36 times ten to the fourth in units of kilograms per meter cubed. This answer is also, if you were to write this out, 13,600. The second multi-step dimensional analysis problem that we're going to take a look at is we're going to change 1,087 feet per second into kilometers per hour. So we've got to take care of the top and the bottom part of the fraction. We need to change feet into kilometers and seconds into hours. To help us make these conversions, some equalities that will be beneficial are the following. In order to change feet into kilometers, I'm going to take advantage that I know that there are 12 inches in a foot. Once I get to inches, then I'm going to use that every inch is the equivalent of 0 0.0254 meters. And then to take meters onto kilometers, we can use the fact that there are a thousand meters one kilometer. 
And then we need to take care of changing seconds to hours, and I'm going to use the equivalent that there are 3,600 seconds per hour. If you happen to need different equalities other than these, um, obviously you could look them up. For the example of time, you might have wanted to say that there are 60 seconds in a minute, and then 60 minutes in an hour, instead of using the one equality that we're going to be using, the 3,600 seconds per hour. So to get started with this problem, let's go ahead and take care of the top part of the fraction. Let's go ahead and get the feet to kilometers. So let's change the feet into inches first. So in this case, if we multiply through by the 12 inches per foot, we'll change the top part of this fraction from feet to inches. And if you recall, we now want to take the inches on to meters and eventually on to kilometers. So let's go ahead and multiply through by the second equality, um, and that is every inch is the equivalent of 0.0254 meters. Notice to get my units to cancel, I need a unit on the top part of the fraction and the bottom. You should see highlighted in front of you that the feet are canceling, one on top, one on bottom. We've also set it up now as highlighted in yellow that the inches are canceling. And if I was to stop right now and do a numerical calculation unit-wise, my answer would be in meters per second. But we want to go on. We don't want meters per second. We want kilometers per hour. So on the top part, we've changed feet to inches, and now inches to meters. And now let's take the meters on to kilometers. And to do so, we'll use the fact that there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Once again, I put the meters on the bottom part of this equality because I'm wanting that unit to cancel. One on the top, one on the bottom. They cancel each other out. So now that I have the top part of the equality taken care of, that is, we have kilometers now on top, I can now change the seconds into hours. Notice that the seconds is on the bottom part of the fraction, so if I want that to cancel, when I multiply through by my next equality, I've got to get the seconds on the top part of the next equality. So I'm going to use the fact that there are 3,600 seconds per hour. Notice here that my seconds will cancel out in the initial 1,087 feet per second. The second was on the bottom part of the fraction, so notice in the 3,600 seconds per hour, I put the seconds on the top part of the fraction. Once again, unit on the top, unit on the bottom. They're going to cancel each other out. So everything highlighted in yellow, unit watts here, is canceling. And we're left with a final answer with the units of kilometers per hour. Now all we have to do is the numerical part. That is, we can multiply the 1,087 times 12 divided by 1 times the 0 0.0254 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 1,000 times the 3,600 divided by 1. And your final answer to four significant figures because the initial value of 1,087 had four significant figures. Zeros in the middle of a number are called captive zeros and they always get to count as significant figures. So since 1,087 has four, I'm going to round my final answer here to four significant figures. And that is 1,193 kilometers per hour. So we've now changed 1,087 feet per second into kilometers per hour. Another type problem would be where we take advantage of a density unit that is provided to be able to change the mass of a solution into its volume. And in this case, our example tells us that we have two kilograms of a solution, and we'd like to know what that volume is in liters, and to help us make this conversion, we can use density. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the algebraic equation that density is equal to mass over volume to solve this problem, being careful with your units. Or you can simply use dimensional analysis to solve this, making sure that your units cancel, one on top, one on bottom, and you can change the mass of a solution into its volume by using the density. Some equalities that are going to be useful here, in addition to the density that is provided, is that a centimeter cubed sometimes called a cc, a cubic centimeter, is the same thing as a milliliter, a non-SI measurement of volume. So that's going to be very useful. A centimeter cube is the same thing as a milliliter. We also need to know that it takes a thousand milliliters to make up one liter. 
and that a thousand grams is the same as a kilogram. Now the reason we need the bottom equality there that a thousand grams equals one kilogram is notice that the units for density are in grams per centimeter cubed. If I want to use that value 2.70, I've got to make sure that my initial mass matches up with the mass in this density. And in this case, that is grams. Notice we're starting off with 2 kilograms of solution, but the density mass is in grams per centimeter cubed. So to be able to use that density unit, I'm going to take my 2 kilograms and change it to grams. Then by using the density, I'll be able to go on to volume, which will be in centimeters cubed, because that's how it's labeled for the density here. By visualizing that a centimeter cubed is the same thing as a milliliter, we'll be able to move on and eventually get our answer in liters. So to start this problem, once again, we want to change the two kilograms to grams to be able to use that density value that is provided. So let's get started. If we take our two kilograms and multiply by the equality that there's a thousand grams in a kilogram, we'll be able to convert the kilograms to grams. Notice that the kilograms cancel out. I set it up that way, one unit on top, one unit on bottom, and now we have a unit of grams. This is very beneficial because if you recall, our density was given in grams per centimeter cubed. So now if I use that density, 2.70 grams per centimeter cubed, written as a fraction. Notice the grams are going to cancel. I put the grams part of the density, the 2.70, on the bottom because I want that unit to cancel. If I was to stop right now, I've actually converted the 2 kilograms of solution into a volume unit into centimeters cubed. The centimeters cubed here is equivalent to a milliliter. So that's going to help us go ahead and move on to the final unit answer, which is obtained in this case in liters. So if we go ahead and recognize that a centimeter cubed is the same thing as a milliliter, once again we can visualize how a unit is going to cancel the centimeter, on, centimeter cubed on top, cancels with the centimeter cubed on bottom, and now we have our answer in milliliters, which is the same as centimeters cubed, um, the equality is 1 over 1. And now to go on from milliliters to liters, we can simply say that there are 1,000 milliliters in a liter. As before, we're setting this up so that our units are going to cancel a milliliter on top and a milliliter on bottom. And what we're finally left here is with our final answer in liters. So if we do the math, the 2 kilograms, the 2 times 1,000 divided by 1 times 1 divided by the 2.70 times 1 divided by 1, times 1 divided by 1,000, we'll end up with a final answer that we're going to want to round to three significant figures. The reason we want to round it to three significant figures, our initial value, the 2, has three significant figures. Zeros at the end of a number always are significant. That is, they do get to count if there's a decimal place in that number. So we're going to round our final answer to two significant figures. And in this case, 2.70.